Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, this is Ryan Hall. Some of you may know me as Frog Bill Go from my DeviantArt site. Uh, I just recently filmed a video on uh, initial concepting, uh, some you know gesture drawing, and going over some some uh, very uh, simple uh, perspective tricks. Uh, this next one I'm actually really excited about, which is uh, Photoshop tricks. Um, I'm going to be going over some shortcuts. Uh, over the years of using Photoshop, I am still learning shortcuts, and these things, you know, you can go for year, like I said, years and not know about one. And I, I just want to kind of go over some that I hope will, uh, if someone has never heard of it, will help it help them save a ton of time just by knowing a simple shortcut. Um, the other thing I'm going to go over is masking, uh, some painting effects, um, and brush creation. Brush creation is really important. Um, uh, there's some very simple adjustments to basic brushes you can do to help you smooth out your colors and uh, push your drawings a lot. All right, so first things first, let's go over some of these shortcuts. And I apologize if some uh, some of this Photoshop stuff chugs. I'm running this video recording thing, and uh, it, it, it's kind of messing up the window in some some uh, modes. So bear with me here. Uh, also, I wanted to make note that I am using a Cintiq 12WX, and <laughs> Uh, for all those Wacom Intuos users or Bamboo uh, tablet users, I I'll let you know that with the Cintiq, I don't use the Cintiq screen to actually do my paints. I actually treat my Cintiq like a Wacom. So if you're using your Wacom to do paints, um, you're in good shape because uh, I found that the Cintiq's colors, at least on the 12WX, they're just not... They're not uh, they're not working for me. I mean, they it just don't. They just the colors just don't come out as rich as I, I, I feel. They don't come out as rich as they do on my monitor. So, I, I pretty much use my Cintiq like a Wacom tablet. Anyway, not trying to bash Cintiqs, but uh, they are very useful for drawing. Um, and my preference is to use it as a regular tablet when I'm doing paints. So, um, I'm hitting F here to switch between window modes. You hold space. And you can move your canvas around. That's pretty useful. Uh, pretty basic movement and stuff. Um, also, I have a layer here where I have this thing, this gray box. What you can do to duplicate layers is, I gotta get my pen here. Okay, you hold Alt or, or first hit V, and then hold Alt and drag it. Click and drag, and you can duplicate that shape. So now I have three layers here, right? One, two, and three. If I hold shift and collect, uh, hold a shift click all three of these layers. So I click the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one, it'll select all of them in between. You hit control and E, they will all mesh, uh, they all merge together. So now I have one layer. It's very useful, especially if you're doing like textures and stuff. You just want to hold alt and click and drag and fill a whole area real easily. Also, if you just want to merge, let's say, this layer with the layer below it, you just click the top layer and hit Control e without selecting the other ones, and it'll just merge the immediate layer below it. Uh, very useful. Uh, also, <clears throat> this is pretty cool. Uh, I learned this pretty recently, actually, and I can't believe I didn't learn this before. But, like I said, you can just go for years without knowing this stuff. Um, so if you hit Control and a it'll select everything. Now, if you hit Control, Shift, and C while that's selected, okay, Control, Shift, C, so I have it copied. Watch this. I have all these things noticed. They're all in different layers, okay? And I, I start up a new file, hit Control and N for a new one, a new file. So I'm going to open this new file. Now watch. If I hit Control, V, it pastes all of those layers in one layer. I hope that makes sense. Here we go. Oh, that's for the future. I'm going to show you guys that in a minute. So normally, if I just hit Control A and Control C, it'll just it'll just copy that one layer. So let's try to follow these. So what happens is I'll hit V, Control V, and it'll paste just that one layer. But like I said, you Control uh, con Shift Control C or yeah Shift Control C. It'll control all. It'll it'll copy every single layer. So it's really useful if you just want to like like select a couple and you know copy like a merge those without merging them basically, which is pretty useful. Also, I'm gonna mess with some of the uh, hue of this here. 
uh, adjustments, hue, saturation. Well, this is pretty cool. Um, I got to hit colorize. If you have a black and white image, you have to hit colorize, and that'll allow you to mess with the color of that layer. So as you see right here, it's changing. Um, I'm going to move that up so you can see it. Okay, so we got that, right? And I'm going to unlock this background. You just double click on the layer, and you're going to get this window and press OK. So now that's not locked. All right, so let's get rid of that one. And let's get rid of like this, this one there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, uh, let's say I want to change the hue of everything. Normally, I would just select the layer and hit hue saturation and mess with that one layer. But what you can do is hit this button right here. It looks like a like a ellip, kind of like a half moon thing, and you just hit um, new. It's called new fill or adjustment layer. You click that. Now let's say I want to change the hue of everything below it. So what that does is it creates this layer called uh, it'll say hue saturation, and then this thing will pop up below it, and you can drag this, and it changes the hue and saturation of everything. You can hit colorize and change the whole color of everything. And the the awesome part about this is it doesn't affect everything it doesn't permanently affect everything so I could turn it on and off super useful um, you can also turn down the um, the fill or the opacity on it <clears throat> so you can like give it just a slight hue uh, hue adjustment another thing that you can do let's say you're feeling like your drawing is looking pretty good but it's a little too bleak so like for instance uh, my drawing here of these birds it's super cold because it's in the winter uh, you can uh, add a new layer, and let's say I want to warm it up. So I hit uh, G to pull up my um, paint bucket. Oh, and if you haven't noticed <laughs> by now, you might want to get a piece of paper to write down uh, some of these things, or go back in the video and write down the shortcuts, because a lot of them are hard to remember. So uh, until you start using them over and over and over. Uh, so I'm going to get a warm color like this red or this yellow or something. Let's get yellow, and I'm going to fill the whole layer above this. Now, if you change, if you go up to this area, which is the, I think it's a, yeah, blending mode, and you turn it to color, everything turn adds a bit of that color to the image. Uh, so if you want to warm up a specific spot, let's say I just want to warm up, um, let's hide that. I'll get my lasso, hit L. Let's say I just want to warm up this one tree. This is a real quick hack job, but you know, just for the conversation. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to turn. Okay. So I filled in that one layer <clears throat> with the yellow. Control D deselects it. Turn it on and off there. Now watch, I can turn the opacity down on it and fill out. There, I like that. You know, it's a little bit warmer than it used to be, it's not as blue. Got a little green to it, green yellow to it. So a lot of times, if I if I'm painting and I feel that a person I just painted is like too pale looking or something, I'll just go over at the end. I'll put a color layer on top of it, and you can change, you can mess with the warmth of everything, or or cool it down if you want. <clears throat> so um, let's see. Let's get to some brushes. I'm going to close this out. Don't want to save. There's that cowboy again. Um, here's a new uh, file. And image size, where am I? Okay, image size. Notice I have it at 300 uh, pixels per inch. If you're going to do paints, I highly suggest uh, making your images at 300 um, uh, pixels or DPI. Um, because when you go to print this thing out, it's going to look fuzzy and blah if you don't. If you have it at the, at the standard, seven, uh, 72 is for web, 300 is pretty safe for print. Super high resolution for print. Uh, 600 pixels per inch is also common for like magazines and stuff. Um, right now I see my width is at 10 inches by 6.25 inches so it's roughly this will print out nicely on a on an eight and a half by 11 uh, paper. Um, you know I can make it exactly eight and a half by 11 if I want to but just for these tutorials I'm gonna keep it there so uh, my computer doesn't chug <laughs> with this camera thing going. All right, so I got my background. Uh, I'm just going to make a new layer above that. And um, let's fill it. I, I normally start off with a darker color, or a, not necessarily darker. I start off with a color in the background, um, uh, as do a lot of traditional painters. They start off with a base color on their canvas and then work off of that. So every, I barely ever work off of white or straight black. I normally have some kind of color because 
in reality, you may think you see white or black, but you, it, chances are you're not. Because light effect, if you look at a white wall, you're going to see a little bit of yellow or a little bit of red or blue on that wall. And you know, if, you, if you're painting in the light of something in a specific uh, scene, you want to make sure everything ties in nicely. So you know, it's like if you crop someone out of a photo and then put them on a white background, they're going to look really weird because the lighting in the, behind them has, is completely changed than what they were in the photo. So start off with the color. And uh, if you hit um, M, uh, as in monkey, uh, you get a you select your um, rectangle tool. So I'm doing that. If you hit Shift M, it'll switch it to oops, uh, cancel. Hit Shift M, it'll change your selector to a circle. Now this this shortcut right here, this next one I'm about to show you is super useful, and I just figured it out recently. If you hold space while you're okay, so you 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 drag your circle, and let's say I want to move it left. People like before I used to go, oh, I got to redraw this thing. It's not far left enough. But now I learned this. You hold space and you can just move it. Really useful. Also, if you hold alt, you can center it in like size from the center as opposed to the side. It allows you for uh, allows more accuracy. And there I let go alt. This is with me holding alt. So it's really useful. Um, I personally don't care for the ellipses in Photoshop. I wish they would fix them. Like, for instance, making angled ellipses is a, is a big pain. One way to do it is to get your circle uh, shape tool and draw your lips, ellipse, and um, get the color there. Right now I have the fill down, turn it up. Okay, and I'm gonna, um, I'm going to rotate it. So normally I would do that, and then you can control. You go to the layer over here, and you hold control, and you see this little square pop up. You control click, and it'll do that selection. And then I'll turn off that layer, and now I have my ellipse selected, and I can draw within that. Anyway, uh, gonna go to. I'm gonna start. Uh, next thing we're gonna work on is brushes. So I started off here. Um, if you hit B and you select your brush tool. And then uh, if I right click, I bring up my brushes. Uh, I used to use these brushes. And then I used to use these brushes because if you click on one, um, hit F5 and you'll bring up your brush uh, window. Move this on the way. Let's see. Minimize that. Okay, so I used to like it, I, I used to use it because of the tapering. And then the, it is good for certain things with uh, the Wacom or using a Cintiq, uh, but overall for painting in things, um, I 